Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today I want to do an alternate scenario if Donald Trump goes against Kamala Harris in the 2024 presidential election. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new. And so guys, pretty much Kamala Harris is at a way weaker point than President Biden is as of right now. You can see Biden barely won the election, 43,000 votes between Wisconsin, Georgia, and Arizona decided the whole election. If Trump would have ended up winning these states, we would have had an electoral college tie. And through the contingency election through the House of Representatives, Donald Trump would have became the president of the United States, I believe, by 26 delegates to 21. Around that range would have been the result in the contingent election. Uh, for the record, I am using plus 10 as the safe margin. So if you see, you know, certain states being safe or lean and you're like, what's going on here? I'm just referencing you know, the 10 plus margin for safe, five for likely, and one for lean. And then under lean would be tilt, as listed here between these three state victories in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Georgia. And if we look at the aggregate from before, Donald Trump is up by 6.6%, .6%, but to get a better sample size, I went back to the last 10 polls, and it actually gives me a plus eight national environment, which is absolutely insane. Looking at Kamala Harris, she's sitting at 38.9% and Donald Trump is sitting at 44.1% in his favorability rating. And so what I did is that usually the favorability rating of a candidate tends to determine what their popular vote share will end up being. And so what I did to kind of gauge the popular vote for gold crown politics as part of the model that I'm going to be using to predict this, you would see Donald Trump winning the popular vote by about, I believe it's, if we look here. Uh, down here, we'll actually end up seeing that he ends up winning the popular vote by 5.2%. That shifts the election 9.7 points from the previous election. And if we look at the aggregate, it's exactly eight points, which is a 12.5 shift to the right. Now, I'm leaving Biden's approval rating in here just because of the fact that more than likely what would happen is Kamala Harris would end up getting the nomination at the convention through, you know, delegates voting for her. Biden would basically just tell all his delegates to vote for Harris instead of him. That is the last minute resort that the Democrats could have to switch. So all these people saying, oh, there's absolutely no chance that Kamala Harris can be the nominee. Well, it's very unlikely. I'm talking about, you know, one to 5% betting odds, but you know, there's still a chance they could just throw all the delegates at her and she becomes the Democratic nominee. Now, it would end up having really bad effects. And I think the aggregate would actually end up becoming worse because, you know, a lot of people in the Democratic primary would be like, well, that's not who we voted for we feel you know lied to and so if kamala harris were to be the party nominee she'd basically be doa in 2024 and we're going to be filling out an electoral map based on this we could see the aggregate plugged it in over here 12.5 shift to the right from 2020 which was a 4.5 percentage point victory for joe biden in the popular vote biden's current approval rating and we have the approval rating subtracted which gives us 5.2 percent and that shifts the national environment 9.7 to the right and both of our results are combined to give us this and we're going to be filling out the electoral college map and so what's actually going to be interesting and you're going to notice this right away is that donald trump in this scenario would win an electoral college landslide you know he lost the popular vote by four and a half points here in 2020 and was able to barely lose the electoral college and so if he's up in the aggregate by about six or eight points depending on where the popular vote would sit here he would basically be guaranteed the electoral college because he'd make a lot of gains in some blue states. The swing states would flip. Texas, Florida, Ohio, Iowa would not even be considerations for swing states. And so the safe map would effectively end up looking something like this. You'd basically have an electoral map where Donald Trump is getting all of the swing states or not all the swing states, but at least Texas, Florida, Ohio, Iowa, just right out the gate against Maine second right out the gate. And that puts him in a pretty good spot. Even for Kamala Harris, if we look at California, it's right above a 10 point margin, so that'd be safe. And I'm going to assume Maryland, DC, Massachusetts, and Vermont would be safe. And that's literally it for all of the safe Democratic states. All the other states are gonna be within 10 points. So you can only imagine what kind of seismic win Donald Trump's about to see in the Electoral College. And if we were to look at the traditional swing states, what's actually funny is that Wisconsin is a 14 point win for Trump. That puts the state in the safe category. Michigan is listed as a 12.2 win. That's in the safe category. Pennsylvania, if we were to look at that margin, it's a 13.6 percentage point win, which would be landslide victories for Trump. Essentially, 
I, I mean, at that point, you'd basically see, like, Dane would get within 20 at that point. Rock would flip. You'd have this county would get within 30. Eau Claire would even basically vote safe Republican at that point. Lacrosse would vote safe Republican. Douglas would be a safe Republican county. So would Door County as well. Like, you'd see these really big shifts in a lot of the counties, and you'd end up having a super red county map for all of these states. Even in Michigan, Oakland would be safe Republican. Saginaw, Muskegon would be safe. You'd have Eaton be safe. Even Ingham would be probably under five points. Um, Wayne County would be probably within 15. So you'd see major shifts to Trump in the scenario. And basically that'd be because due to depressed turnout. Now Trump, I think in this scenario, he'd outperform his 2020 total in votes. I think he'd probably get around 78 million, but Kamala Harris would probably achieve like 63, 62 million votes. And so that's why you'd see this major win in the electoral college. And if we look at North Carolina, it's a 17 point win for Donald Trump. And if you look at Georgia, for example, you're going to see, you know, a 15.5 percentage point win. If you look at Arizona, Donald Trump would be in the safe category there. Even Nevada would be listed as a 16.3 percentage point win, giving Donald Trump, you know, 313 or excuse me, 312 safe electoral votes right out the gate. The likely states, Hawaii is under 10 points for Biden. Washington is likely even Oregon doesn't make it into the likely category for Joe Biden. And if we look at Connecticut, for example, we'll see, you know, a likely margin of victory. Delaware's right above the five point win. If we look at Rhode Island, you will see that Donald Trump is losing there by about seven points. And that's pretty much all the likely states for Biden. Even New York is within 10 points. It's actually only a six point win for Kamala Harris in this scenario. The likely Republican states include New Mexico. Donald Trump would win New Mexico by 7.8%, marking a huge landslide in this state. And if we look at Maine at large, it is right under the likely margin. So pretty much we would see Maine's first be under, you know, 10 points. And I think that's actually the only likely state for Trump. I think it's only New Mexico. The lean Democratic states you'd see here are Oregon. It's only a 4.1 percentage point win for Kamala Harris. Even Illinois and Colorado don't even make it into the, you know, lean category for either candidate. Virginia would be a 4.9 percentage point victory for Donald Trump, a massive victory here in the Electoral College. Maine at large would end up being a lean state. If we look at New Hampshire, that would end up being a 3.8 percentage point win for Donald Trump. And New Jersey would end up being a tilt margin for the former president. So according to the model, he'd actually pick up the state of New Jersey in this electoral scenario. Nebraska's second would end up being an eight point win. So that'd be the only other likely electoral vote alongside New Mexico. And we have the final three states, Minnesota, Illinois, and Colorado. Minnesota in this scenario, quite funny enough, if we go down to it, you're going to see here, it's almost a likely margin of victory for Donald Trump. He wins it by 4.7% in the last two states, Colorado and Illinois. Colorado is a 0.6 percentage point win for Biden. Just for reference, he won it by 13.5%. Here, you know, Virginia was a 10 point win here. New York was a 23 point win. So you see massive shifts across the country, Texas, Iowa, Ohio, and Florida, North Carolina, and all the, you know, close swing states wouldn't even be in the question. Even New Hampshire, Minnesota, and Maine at large would be DOA for Harris, even Nebraska's second. Even New Mexico, to an extent, would end up being a likely state it actually vote to the right of new hampshire and virginia in this case due to large hispanic support and the major major sleeper flip of the night in this electoral model is illinois donald trump actually picks up the state of illinois by a till margin according to my election model and i know you guys are going to be in the comments saying oh, this is an insane margin for donald trump to be winning by this much i'd expect a lot of democrats to hemorrhage support in the party, I think RFK would be getting like 15% of the popular vote in this scenario. Harris probably gets around, you know, 37. Donald Trump's probably getting around 43, 44%, maybe even 45. He might even touch his 2020 percentage, which would be absolutely insane. And if you were to look at this, guys, this model 
at least my part was reversed engineered to 2020 to be as accurate as possible and if we were to go down here to this model gold crown politics his model was actually a hundred percent correct in 2020 because what he did is he had to basically guess the popular vote that is the only thing that you plug in here now i did add the change in pv so you'd kind of have you know a similar metric over here so the models are synonymous if that makes sense to basically avoid as much error as humanly possible but the only thing you plug into gold crown politics's model is the popular vote you find out how much the state votes relative to the nation how much relative to the nation they vote in 2024 and then you basically get the popular vote and you subtract that from that margin and you'd end up getting you know a whatever margin the state would end up being and he was able to predict 2020 pretty spot on he predicted the popular was going to be a 5.2 percentage point win for biden it ended up being 4.5 which allowed him to get a 306 to 232 prediction in 2024 and so this is my map donald trump would win 380 electoral votes to kamala harris's 40, 158 electoral votes as of right now according to the current data if you guys did enjoy the video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure to follow the Twitter and join the Discord in the description down below. And I will see you guys very, very soon.